let's go ahead and talk about our equilibrium constant. So at the top of the page, just put K equals equilibrium constant. So you remember that K section off to the right side of the Le Chalier? That is going to talk about this right here. So first things first, um, let's go ahead and write out a kind of basic equation, right? So what I'm going to do, instead of the numbers for, you know the coefficients, like if you have two H2s, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put lowercase, okay? So let's just say I have lowercase a, go ahead and write this out and uppercase A, so like I have A number of whatever this is, um, plus B number of whatever this is, then put my equilibrium sign, goes to C number of C's, plus, you guessed it, D number of D's. Okay, and just for future selves, when we come back to look at these notes, um, let's put down A, B, C, D is going to equal concentrations. And our lowercase is going to equal, and let's, let's make this intelligent, right? Let's put down stoichi. <laughs> right, yeah. Stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, remember, stoichiometry was just how much of the stuff we have, quantifying that. Coefficients, we use that in math, that's just like 2x, right? It's the thing that goes in front of whatever substance we're using. Okay? <coughs> so far, so good? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so the idea of K, um, sometimes, and actually, let's just put this down, K equals Q at equilibrium. Great question. Q is going to be equal to K. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it's... Basically, at this point, I just want you to know that. Q is K. K is Q. At equilibrium, they're equal. Next year, we're going to get into if Q is bigger or less than K. But at this point, we're only at equilibrium, so don't worry about it. Okay? So if you see somebody talking about Q in, in the problems that I gave you, it's just K. That's the bottom line for me. Okay? So Q equals K at equilibrium they're going to be the same, right? Now, what it is, again, you go, well, what is K? We still haven't got there. What K is going to be, K is going to be your constant, of course, but that, let's think, do, do constants change? They're constant, right? So that's a no, right? They never change, except in certain cases. So we'll talk about that. You would think, wouldn't you? But it's okay. We'll get there. Okay? So, K, and put a little C next to it, equals your products over reactants. And Aaron, could you shut the door for me real quick? Got some people being ratchety out there. <laughs> We're trying to learn. Yeah. Here we go. Products over reactants. So let's come up with an example for this. If we had this equation right above, we would put our products on top, right? So we go concentration of big C, and then you remember how we do this to the little c power, the coefficients. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> There you go, and then 
Big D to the little D power. If that's my products, how do you think I'm going to write my reactants? Exactly. <laughs> B to the B power. Alright. Is there any, does everybody see where these letters came from? Uh, that first part. Yeah. Right? Okay. Again, thumbs up, we're alright. Okay. If you're, if you're like, yo, Mr. Hill, calm down, let me know. Okay, but again, baby steps, right? We're getting there. We're getting there. So, let's introduce the idea of our friends. Let's put XO and endo. Now if something's exothermic that means it is producing heat, exactly, and if something's endothermic that means we have to put yeah it's absorbing heat, right, we have to put heat in. So here's an example. Um, sometimes you know we see it as Look, if you have A plus B goes to C, usually you see like plus heat, right? And so if it has heat on this side, that means it's exothermic, right? Exactly. Okay? So if we have exothermic reactions with heat on the product side, they're not always going to be put this way, though. So what I want to kind of throw out there is what if I had something like A plus B goes to C, but then I said, hey, my change in heat, my change in enthalpy is going to be equal to, and then I give you a number, like let's say, I don't know, minus 10. So write this down. We'll get here. We'll get here. Okay. Write this down first. Okay. Now, I want you to notice this guy right here. Yes, it's a negative number. Your delta H is negative. Now, the way you do this, again, we're coming back to products over reactants. You're always going to do this. It's products over reactants, products minus reactants. Always start with the products, subtract or divide by the reactants. Yeah, no, let's, let's look at that. So, let's say I have my products were, I don't know, let's, let's pick something. Say my products came in at 10, on like kilojoules, and my reactants came in at, uh, let's say, 50 kilojoules. Okay, now there's a few ways we could tell this is exothermic, right? We could do, remember where we did the graph, where you start off, you have your reactants on there up here, and then you have your activation energy and then your products are down here so like if this is 50 and this is 10 you could tell why because there's this change from here to here and so all of this energy this 40 kilojoules worth of energy went somewhere where did it go? Out. exactly it just it's, a, it's an exothermic reaction, so it got expelled into the environment. Exactly. Okay, so there's that. Same thing's going to happen here. You take your products, like if we were to do this, we take 10 products minus reactants, minus 50, gives us a delta H of negative 40. Okay, so you see how if it's exothermic, you get this negative number. So I want to make sure you're used to seeing, even though we've put plus heat, they can also say, hey, your delta H is negative, just to kind of mess with you a little bit. Okay? So on the flip side, though, if this is exo, if we had a delta H that was positive, what would we expect that to be? Endothermic, yeah, exactly, right? So we'll put 
endo, and then just so we have it in one place, delta H equals negative XO. Put a box around that, so when you come back to these notes, you'll know exactly where to look. Alright? Again, how are we doing? Gonna check in. Alright? Just easy. Delta H positive. Endo. Delta H negative. XO. I'm going to let you have a few problems with this to work on it so you can see it. So, you know, don't worry. It's not like, okay, we're done. We're moving on. Um, but, yeah, right. This <laughs> Fair enough. But this is kind of where I want to keep it. If you have your card, go ahead and pull that out. Okay, so go ahead and pull out your card. Dealing with equilibrium. Okay, go ahead and flip it over. We're going to add some stuff to the back. So at the top, I want you to put KC equals equilibrium constant. Now it seems here that I have the constant, the K, changing. Now we talked about how constants don't change because they're constant, but why would it make sense for if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic, that heat would cause it to change. Um, okay, so that there is. So let's let's extrapolate on that. Let's try to pull that pull that out. Let's make it that idea a little bit more active. What what could we do? No, it's okay. Keep going with it. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. But let's let's okay. So let's think about this. If you are, let's say you're you're working out, right? We don't, yeah, I, I <laughs> some of us are going to be more, more likely to relate to this one. But let's say you're working out, um, and you have, you're working out, where you work out is important, right? Are you working out in the ocean? Are you working out in Alaska? Are you in a gym? What is the difference here? The environment. The environment. Exactly. Okay, so the environment is going to affect whether or not these things happen is going to affect your equilibrium constant. Why? Because in exothermic and endothermic reactions, heat is going to be involved, right? It's going to be, and we consider that a lot of times as a product or a reactant. So if we're in, like, think of if you have a, uh, this reaction going on in a furnace, something that's really hot, and that's your product, it's going to change the way your reaction works a lot, right? Because that it's not going to want to go towards the heat because there's already a ton of heat. So it's going to start going back towards the reactants. Does it yeah, so it, it would, exactly, it would be almost too far that way that it would slide back. Okay? So I want you to get down. If the equilibrium constant is going down if temperature is up, right? Again, you could word that the other way if you want. Temperature goes up, then your equilibrium constant goes down. And if your temperature is going down, your equilibrium constant goes up. Again, if it's endothermic, it goes up and up. Same thing, so they're going to be related. Your equilibrium constant goes down if temperature goes down. This is just kind of like a little cheat sheet to have. Okay? So take a look at the sheet we were working on earlier. With, yeah, exactly. On Le Chatelier's principle. 
and see if you can determine with the K, with our equilibrium constant, is it going to remain the same? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up? What I would say is that looking at, here, let me see if I can find my copy of this. I'll go, I'll go to the back side of this one. <coughs> Unless heat is involved, the constant is going to remain the same. So I can just, heck, I can just ditto this all the way down until I hit temperature, yeah. right? And then same and same. Yeah, and so you got to figure out, okay, is this going to be exothermic? Is it going to be endothermic? And then use your sheet right here. Okay, I'm going to be walking around, checking on you guys, making sure you're good. Check with your partner. If you both don't get it, call me over. Use your resources. Let's go ahead and talk about our equilibrium constant. Let's go ahead and talk about our equilibrium constant.